Hello everybody and welcome back to the 12th man and today my guest is Dave, he's a big Manchester United fan and we're going to be talking about um, Manchester United season so far, we're going to be talking about the transfer window that's just passed, um, we're going to be talking about his thoughts, uh, Dave's thoughts on Jose Mourinho and how he's doing at the club at the moment. So, hello Dave. Hello. Uh, how are you? Yes, yeah. I'm all right, Tom, mate, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about last night's game. So, what do you make of the performance against Tottenham last night and obviously the 2 0 loss, sadly yeah, for yourselves? <laughs> disappointing. I mean, I knew it was going to be tough away at Tottenham, but to go to concede the last few minutes into the game and then just they, they looked, they reacted quite well. They, they went for it again, they looked quite positive. Luis made a couple of good saves, but they just. Second half just seemed to just fizzle out. And to be fair, Tottenham did play well. Sometimes you don't mind losing a game when the other side played quite decent. But second half was very disappointing. It just didn't seem like the game was just gone from there and they didn't really look like they come back into it. And I think the own goal killed it off just before half time when Phil Jones, I mean, it's a Premier League centre half playing for a club like Man United. You should be wrapping your left foot around that and putting it. You shouldn't be put, trying to sit it with your right. Yeah. It's just disappointing. I can't even describe what, what was going through his head when he did that. But the, I noticed it's a bit shaky just before that. There was a touch. He nearly put one of the Tottenham players through. I think it might have been Son or somebody. He, he he literally miscontrolled the ball and it rolled through. De Gea luckily swept it up. I think, I think I mean, from what I saw the game last night, Dave, and, and I'm not going to lie to you, I've only watched the highlights of the game because mm. obviously I was watching Stoke. But watching the highlights, I mean, there was a, quite a few elements of luck. Obviously, the... the Conceding after eleven seconds, yeah, think he's doing any favours, is he? No. But um, not only that, I mean, the Phil Jones's own goal. Th th there was elements of luck. Mm. Not taking anything away from Spurs. Spurs no. are a good side anyway. I mean, regardless of of, of of the result last night, Spurs are a good side anyway. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think they did have a little bit of luck. So um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too disheartened. No. But I think it's just, the, I mean, because to be honest with you, let's you know. The, the, the title has gone anyway. 15 points is way, way too much to, to pull back, especially at this stage of the year, at this, at this the year, the season, sorry. You know, we're in February now. Yeah. Manchester City aren't going to lose five, six they, games. They don't even look like slipping up, do they? They're no, just consistent. No, exactly, exactly. But um, uh, like I say, I mean, conceding as early as you did, the own goal, uh, you know, there was, there was, there was, for me, I, I think. It was one of them games last night where either either way, I don't think, it, in the grand scheme of things of the season, it doesn't make that much of a difference because you're going to finish in the Champions League place, um, in my opinion, anyway. Um, but the question I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to now, actually, yeah. is Jose Mourinho. Now, Jose Mourinho, do you think he gets unfairly treated by the press at times? Do you uh, think he's... This is a good one, really, because I've been thinking about this. And... Um... The thing is with Jose, um, at times he doesn't help himself, but again, this is, um, I think this comes down to a lot. When you've been in a game and something you get happens that quick and you think something hasn't gone your way, and sometimes he's right, he's got a point, sometimes it's totally like, obviously, blatantly isn't what he thinks it is. He stands his ground, but when you're thrown straight out after a game, when you go into the dressing room, you talk to your players, you're fired up from that, and then you have to come straight out after and do an interview with the press. Mm. I think sometimes it just the emotions can overfly, but then in his pre-press conference as well, sometimes he does get... I, it's, a, it's an interesting one, because he doesn't help himself with things mm. at times, but I do think the thing is, the, especially the British press, and it does seem to be that... Like, I know Fergie got it a lot and you know Mourinho got it a lot when he was at Chelsea they do look for the negatives and everything and I think before that's with the national team before big tournaments instead of finding positive things to print they'd rather go and look, dig dirt up and stories and I think that's the British press for you yeah, yeah I, I agree with everything you've said I, I mean the one thing I will say about Jose Mourinho and, and I don't know if this is just me but when he first came into this country when he, when he, when he, when he first took over Chelsea there was I think everyone sort of thought he was a bit of a, a comical figure, as well as obviously a very good manager because of the job they did at Porto. Yeah. But I think you know there was an element of even though you know he sort of said out he said it how it was, he wasn't afraid to sort of have confrontations with managers, and you know he'd say he'd speak his mind. I don't know if it's me though, but I think since he's taken the Manchester United job, I think 
he seems a little bit more miserable. Yeah. Like, like, and, and I think that, that sense of fun, that sense of, you know, not taking himself always too seriously. Yeah. I, I think, I, I've got to be honest with you, I, I think now he, he's, he's, he's gone like the other way. Like everything's, everything, everyone's sort of, sometimes, this is how it comes across mm. to me. Sometimes everything, every, everything comes across like, you know, everyone's against me. And I'd agree with you. I think the press at times are fucking brutal, but let's mm. be completely honest. They're like that with with pretty much yeah. any, any sort of club, any sort of manager that makes a mistake, you know, they, they are scrutinised in the press. But obviously, because of the the standard of Manchester United, that yeah. what Alex exactly like you said, like the, the bar that Alex Ferguson set for mm. the club, then you're always going to be under scrutiny. Yeah, the thing with Ferguson, you knew exactly how to handle it, didn't you? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean a couple of times yeah. earlier on, the BBC thing was a bit <clears> wrong. I mean, it took him years. He eventually did come round to that. And, I think I actually started talking to them again. Did show that he perhaps let that go on too long, and he didn't handle that the best when he refused to talk to them. But most times with the press, he knew exactly how to handle it. Whereas Mourinho, like I say, he's gone a bit sort of the world's against me. Uh, but I think it comes to when you come to Manchester United. I think all the silly things he did when he was at Chelsea and Madrid, yeah, he did some silly things. I think you can't do that. You you're not allowed to act like that. This is Manchester United. We don't tolerate that. And I think yeah. when he got the job, I know a few people said, well, he'll have to book his ideas up because he's not. sometimes he does say things he shouldn't say. Mm. And he gets a bit... But I think he, I think the thing is with the job, he's come in and he had a good first season considering he got them back into the Champions League and we won the Europa League. That was the way he back door back in. We, but I think he's had a big build back on his hands. And I think it's since Fergie left, especially with Moyes and Van Gaal, it's sort of... It went down with Moyes and Van Gaal, his first season picked it up a bit, but then second, just sort of, towards the end, he lost a sort of plot with it. And I think it's uh, he inherited quite a few players that not only Fergie left, when Fergie left, they were aging, but I think they brought bad as well. I think there's a couple of players he spent too much money on. I mean, the Di Maria, Falcals, they've mm. brought names yeah. in, but they haven't yeah. worked. And then there's other players there now that sort of. They're not. The good, the good, the good players, but they're not leader players, and they're not perhaps the money they've spent. But I know it doesn't help with the market values going up. I mean, it's getting ridiculous, isn't uh, it? Let's be honest. Mental. I mean, like Giroud yesterday. Yeah. I mean, my mate, my mate uh, posted on onto our, our Facebook page, our Facebook group. You know, he, he said, you know, he, he asked the question: thirty-one years old, seventeen million. Yeah. And I mean, don't get me wrong. In today's market, it's not a shock, yeah. but it's it, it's getting worse. You know, yeah. let's go back, say, 10 years, 31-year-old 31, 31 striker. Yeah. You're paying nowhere near that. No, yeah. no, not, you're probably paying three, three yeah. million, four million yeah. at best. But it's it's not just, it's like Olivier Giroud, let's be honest. I think, I liked him at Arsenal, I think he's a good player, but 31. Chelsea, the best, they're going to get 18 months out of him, if that. Probably 18 months to two, to yeah. two years. Yeah, two years, But yeah. he is, the thing with Giroud, he doesn't tend to start many games. Yeah. So in terms of energy and fitness-wise... Yeah. It's not. I wouldn't say it's much of a risk, and I suppose that's what Chelsea have thought, yeah. you know. Because he isn't a bad player. No. He's a fucking arsehole. I can't yes. stand the, the fucking French prick. I can't. But I will say this, you know, he's he, his record hasn't been half bad, and um, you know he scored a couple of worldies as well mm. for Arsenal. Remember yes. that scorpion kick he scored. The he scored other, him, important goals as well for yeah, the time. He, he dragged them out yeah. of the shit at times. Yeah, actually, yeah, abso- absolutely. But, um, I mean, going back to Manchester United, I mean, in terms of the transfers, and this is something I was going to mention, you know, um, what do you make of the uh, signing of Alexis Sanchez? Um, obviously, you must be pleased. Yeah, I mean, I think it isn't, it's a fact of the matter. To get a player of that calibre in January, you can't pass it up. There's, well, there's players that you get, if you get the opportunity to sign them, you get it over the line. It's mm. Especially with, as well, because let's face it, he would have gone to Man City in the summer. He'd have let, let his contract run out at Arsenal. He'd have gone to Man yeah. City in the summer. Yeah, so it's not just... The fact that we've signed him, I mean, that's one thing that shows it's coming back. We've signed Lukaku under Chelsea's nose in the summer, mm. and then we've gone and got Sanchez under City's nose. So we're showing that we can still compete with these sides, even though we might not be. I mean, City have been phenomenal this season. Yeah, and you can't. I mean, no, no one can take that away from him. I mean, Guardiola's set them up in it. Yeah. In a way, which I think he's tried to emulate what he was doing at Barcelona. Yeah. Um, which is working. I mean, if mm. we're completely honest. Um, but now, I mean, carry on. Anyway, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, see, so the market, I think United will always attract the big players, even like there's two times when Moyes left and they didn't qualify for the Champions League, didn't even get Europa League. 
they still brought the likes of the Maria and Falcao and they still attracted the big names that were prepared to have a year out of Europe yeah. to play. And then when we didn't qualify for the Champions League, they got Pog Bruni Ibrahimovic. I mean, the fact of the matter for Paul Pogba to play in a Champions League final to then move to a club that's going to play Europa League football next season. Mm. And we actually, they go through and he won it. But to attract them players, I think United's still got the pulling power, whereas Liverpool are panicking a bit because if they don't get Champions League, they're worried they won't sign anybody in the summer. No few of their fans have been panicking about that. Whereas mm -hmm. at Man United, you've always thought, well, if we didn't qualify, it would be. It's not good for the club not to hope, but we could cope for a year without it. I think we've still got the ability to attract the players to bring them in to do the job to get us back into that position. Yeah, Dave, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean,. Manchester United have the ability to attract big name players. Doesn't matter where you finished in the league. I mean, obviously, some players would want to play in the Champions League, but I think just saying the name, you know, Manchester United, playing for Manchester United is a big thing. Yeah. Um, but I just want to, you know, just creep on something that you've that you've mentioned regarding Liverpool. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Liverpool, even even though Liverpool are, are a huge fucking club and, and they've achieved a lot yeah. over the over the years and. Okay, not so much in you know since the modern era. They, yeah. I mean, they won the they won the Champions League, and obviously they won things like the FA Cup and the League Cup. But in terms of the big prize, the yeah. Premier League, they've never won that. But now you might not like, might not like me saying this, but I'm no. going to be completely honest with you. I think Liverpool, some of the Liverpool players currently in that squad, yeah. Uh, uh, in particular, the, the the two wingers, Mane and Salah, and it's something I've said quite a few times over. Uh, probably for me on the day probably two of the best wingers in the league oh god yeah I mean the Liverpool front line is absolutely scary I mean obviously what you're watching like when they played Man City yeah yeah I mean this is but then this is the inconsistency of Liverpool they go and lose against Swansea yeah. and I mean that that is yeah. the biggest problem that we've got yeah and the fact with Liverpool as well the this is what the press got another thing about Mourinho and the press when when United went to Liverpool and got that nil nil draw Everybody slaty Mourinho for going there and parking the buzz as they've quoted all season he parks the buzz but Liverpool go uh, City went there and they got done over because they went there with that normal style You sometimes it's games you've got to look at and you've got to think if we can nick it we can nick it but at the same time on a whole that point could be a vital point that keeps us in an automatic Champions League spot yeah absolutely I mean I I'm not gonna lie. I criticised Manchester United a bit for that nil nil draw, yeah. but then again, it's like you say. I mean, you you sort of a, you accommodate your formations and your tactics to to a team that you play into their style of play. You try and like sort of overpower them with with your yeah. tactics, and that's Jose Mourinho. He, yeah. Let's be honest, he's done that everywhere he's gone. Yeah, and he's he's one of the masters at it. Yeah, um, I think this season, if if I could if I could have a real sort of not not a real dig but like you know I'm just going to be honest with you I think when you played Manchester City at home yes I thought that I mean I thought you should have given it more of a go you were at home yes. and, 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 and United fans were, were sort of having a dig at me saying well well you know you, if you go out there to attack them they're going to turn around and they're going to score five or six but you didn't do that and you still conceded two correct yeah so you've got for me you're at home yes. you've, and, and, and let's be honest no one can turn around to me and say oh Manchester United um, aren't strong enough to you know to compete against Manchester City that is bollocks yeah. you have got an excellent fucking team you've got some tremendous players in there why not give it a go at home yeah I totally, I totally agree with you they, they should have been I was disappointed with that game that they should have gone for it a bit more and uh, you feel they did ease off a bit there's, there's been times like that but Let's face it, as a manager, you're not going to get it right every time, no, have you? And he, no, probably, no. he probably hurt more the fact that Mourinho thought... I mean, that the end of last season, when we beat Chelsea at home, it was sort of like that sort of... They were running away with the league and we beat them and it was sort of like, yeah, we know exactly how to play and they marked Hazard and Pedro out the game with Darmian and Herrera. And it worked. But you're going to get weeks where it doesn't work. I mean, that Man City side, we're good, but at the same time, we should have attacked it more. But that's the thing with the season we're going... At home, we have. There's been weeks where we've played really well, and I thought, you know what, that was pretty decent. We've turned teams over and played really well. But then I think the worst one for me was Southampton just after Christmas, the nil-nil draw at home. Yes, well, we uh, were we were awful. We were absolutely shocking, and it was just the first time I've left Old Trafford thinking, my God, that was terrible. 
Yeah, I mean, you, 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 I mean, as a Stoke fan, I could, I could, I could reel off about fucking 10, 15 <laughs> games a season, Dave. So don't, yeah, you know, don't be too harsh on your own. <laughs> no, own no, team, yeah. Pal, but, to, but no, I mean, I think, I think the thing is with with with, with United last season, for example, let's, if we just skip back yeah. a bit to last season, you were drawing a lot of games in games yeah. you were completely dominating. Yeah, and this season, let's be honest, most of them games you finished off with yeah. with, with ease, really. Yes. Um, especially your first what your first ten games of the season, and and I, I, I mean there was a lot of talk in the press. Well, you know United had a nice easy stroll at the start of the season. There's no easy no. game in the Premier League. Exactly well, at the bottom of the table shows that now. Yeah, of course it, it does. It, there there are ten teams struggling at the bottom yeah. of the table, and that's because it's it's everyone sort of picking up points of everybody. Yeah, and, and that's why it's the tightest ever been at the bottom. But on the flip side of it. The reason it's been walked over, sorry, the top of the league is 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 out of everyone's reach is because Man City have been that good. Yes, they have, yeah, and, and they're the only sort of team really that are turning over everybody. Yeah, I mean, it must frustrate. But Man City are that good. I mean, they've scored the late goals. They've been a bit like we were in the past. They've got the late yeah, goals. Got, yeah, yeah, and absolutely. They, they've, they've, yeah. Been, they've been good to watch, and people do look at Man City, and they, they are the team. If you wanted to watch a team play football, the way Pat Guardiola's got them playing, that is the entertaining way to watch it. Yeah, but sometimes the I mean. There was a BBC interview on the on the radio shows, and there's some fan. He was an absolute prick. I'm mean, a Man United fan, and this is why we get a bad name because there's a lot of them out there that have got tinted glasses on. And he was saying he'd rather watch United play attacking football and finish fifth. And it's like, what the? You, really? I mean, Mourinho's it might not be the most glamorous style, but at least he, you, I'd, all day long you've got to aim to win the games. I mean, years ago Mourinho went into Milan, won the Champions League with him. They played yeah. Barcelona. And one of my mates turned around to me and said, so the night, the morning after, because he obviously, he literally like sat part of the buzz, that game, that's when the first part of the buzz yeah. come into it. And he said, is, is it killing the game or is it a tactical genius? He said, he's, he's got the job done. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you do it, you get the job done. You stop them from playing at the time. Guardiola's Barcelona were ripping teams to pieces. Yeah. And he stopped them. And that's yeah. exactly, you do what you can to stop them. Yeah, and that's what it's about. Look, look yes, we all want to see entertaining football. Yeah. We all do. I mean, um, Pep Guardiola with his teams, he, he sort of he does seem to master it. It's something that he's very good at. But it, just because you play entertaining football doesn't necessarily give you the results. Yeah. A prior example is years ago, back before Stoke came, what West Bromwich Albion used to play decent football, but they but, but, but the yeah, Mowbray, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. they yo-yoed. Yeah, they did. They went up for a year. They were, they were at the stage where they weren't good enough for the Premier League, but they were too good for the Championship, and they yo-yoed. And they, yeah, and they were and sort of at that crossroads where yeah. where, where they, they couldn't sort of get it right. Yeah, and and you're absolutely right. And, and I mean, you know, like like you say, in terms of Jose, yes, there are games when he parts the buzz, but he feels that's necessary. Yeah, I wouldn't always agree with it. I wouldn't no. always agree with it, but I, I'm I'm not saying it's the wrong thing. You know, mm. it's it's not necessarily the wrong thing, but you know, you, you play to your strengths. You know, and you you, you like I've said already, you, you you've just got to out outsmart the opposition with whatever tactics possible. Yeah. So you know, I wouldn't say that's a, a, a criticism of him. I, I think sometimes though, I think um, sometimes as well with with, with Ose, it's his reactions yes. as well to, to certain things. Yeah. I mean, when he first came United last season, wasn't there, wasn't there a couple of occasions where he was sent to the stands? Yeah, there was kicking uh, bottles and things bottles. like that. But I think as well the FA as well. I mean, it's a conspiracy, and I can go on, and I can. It's so easy to become one of them deluded where everything's against you. And <laughs> but he has had a. I mean, that Southampton away touchline ban for stepping one yard out of his box. He yeah. literally. I mean, he, yeah, he, he, how are you looking when you're watching the game? You're not looking at the line below you. No. But then the fact of the matter is that somebody else can go running up to a fourth official like Jurgen Klopp's and push yeah. before and gets and gets nothing does it must push I know he's gone miserable and he, you know, people say all the words out to get him and he's an idiot but it must frustrate him when he sees things like that happening mm. I mean it's like Gladiola was berating uh, was it Nathan Redmond after Southampton yeah and he, did he put his arm around he put his, but he was, yeah and he was like in his face weren't he and I know it was being positive but at the same time if Mourinho had done that you can guarantee the FA would have jumped on him and yeah, perhaps probably enforced but him he, he hasn't helped it that the reason why they probably do it is because over the years the reputation has <coughs> built himself up because he has been silly and he's done things that have perhaps when he was younger he probably regrets I mean he, he was he a league cup final against Liverpool when he was at Chelsea when he turned around and sort of got in the Liverpool fans faces after they scored I think 
remember years yes. ago. When, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, uh, and he's, he did the touch when Chelsea when he first came back to Chelsea, they won the league. They won at Anfield, and then he run the touchline to sort of. Oh, he's had a history of doing it, that. Yeah, when he was at Portsmouth. Yeah, yeah, when he did against, against United, yeah, didn't he? Exactly. Yeah. And you know, I don't. You see that part side of it. I like that. Yeah. I love that. But I was just going to say, this is the I, thing. But then the FA punish him. It's like it's. It, it's like the, the, you're not allowed to have character anymore and show emotion because it's like I mean one of the most daft ones is taking your shirt off when you score. I mean, come on, you, yeah. you, you're going to a biggest load of yeah, rubbish. They almost it. like you can't celebrate scoring a goal. You can't celebrate a big thing. It's like you can't show any passion anymore because you're going to get punished for it. It sort of comes with like I don't know if, if they see it as like political correctness or yeah. something, and I don't I don't understand it. It's no. with, and it takes the shine out of football a bit, yeah. you know, because football is a game about emotion. It's a game about you know, celebrate when you when you do yeah. something. You, it's fine to celebrate. Yes, there, there is a line. That, you know, there are lines that, that that shouldn't be crossed. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's sport. People love sport. People love winning. People people love the club. Yes. So why why shouldn't the players and and the fans you know celebrate? Yeah. But as we say, we all know there's boundaries. Yes. Um. But no, I mean, you know, to to be honest, Dave, I think I mean, in my opinion, I think yeah. I would say he does get a bit of step from the press and and you know on quite a lot of occasions it is unnecessary but in fairness you know to to, to sort of even that out he, he sometimes doesn't help himself no he doesn't i said that from the start yeah i just want to say that he does not sometimes some of the things he comes out with he's just uh, a bit yeah you have to think you have to take a step back and just sort of <laughs> breathe and but it yeah. is hard when you but he's only human yeah exactly you yeah. know he, and he's got yeah. he's got emotions and you know um is it, I mean, so far at Manchester United, I would say that you know winning a, a Europa League title and, and obviously winning the League Cup last season, yeah. I mean, you, you, you'd say he's doing a good job. Yeah. And you, you're second in the league. It's just unfortunate yeah. the time that you know that Pep Guardiola all of a sudden has got his team together. He's he spent a shitload of money yeah. on his back four and thought, right, that's where my problems were. Yeah, my attacking options are fine. And he's, and he's fixed it and you know yeah, and, that, and fair play to Guardiola for doing that and that must frustrate Mourinho that probably like a couple you know, last, over the last two seasons if United had been where they are with the points they are they might have been, well they certainly would have been in the running they might have even been top of the league <laughs> yeah, by now yeah. and it's, if this, if this yeah. was last season you're, yeah. pro you're probably a couple of points behind yeah. Chelsea aren't you, you exactly know? yeah so well like I say it's it, it's unfortunate but that's the Premier League yeah, for you exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is going to be my last question, Dave. Yeah. So, obviously, this season you you sat in second place. You, I mean, you 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 are playing quite well. You're obviously playing quite well. You, you wouldn't be in second. Um. <clears throat> so, really, this season is out now. Manchester yeah. City have, have won the league. Yes. You know, every, there's no point in in thinking any different because it's factual. Really, they are going to win the league. So, in the summer next year, yes. who do you think you should be be signing? to sort of improve the squad to compete against Manchester City next yeah, season this is a good one I mean ideally I think the one that we would have, we all wanted this season really was Griezmann but I think that's gone now he's going to go to Barcelona by the looks of it from what yeah. I've seen and now they've signed Sanchez as well I don't see Griezmann fitting that sort of at United I think he'll go to Barcelona I think that is pretty much done deal I think more or less that's going to be like one yeah. of the big ones um, another player I like I like Dybali Mm. At Juve, I think he's a really good he's player. Quality. Yeah, absolutely superb. Could be a chance there because he's well in with Pogba from their days at Juve together. If he wants to come to England, it might be a chance. I think he is a really good player. With with that ball, I mean, he can play behind the strike and he can play yeah. up top. Yeah. So I mean, you, you're I, you're happy both ways. Really. Definitely think they need another striker because obviously Zlatan will. Yeah, he'll go to the MLS. He'll. I mean, he's, he's this year he's done well come back, but I don't think it was like. I thought it was more of a loyalty thing because he come back from his injury they kept with him he stood by him didn't yeah and, um, but I do think they need another striker to keep and they've got Rashford that can play there but or Marshall but Lukaku needs someone to keep him on his toes because at the moment he's the only one I think when United have always done well they've always had a striker but they've had somebody that can come in and if you don't play well you can come in and lose your place you can be on the bench like, yeah. when they won the treble they played two up front then but they had York Cole sharing himself so they had four strikers that could play up there and that when Van Persie was there they had Chicharito they had Rooney they had players that could you always think you've got to keep on your toes if I don't score a couple of goals games I'm on the bench and someone else is in that, a lot of that's down to, come, to formations there yes well now we play one up front yeah. this is the thing but I would think definitely <coughs> need another striker somebody to compete 
Uh, I also think that United need you know, um, to look at a uh, replacement at right back now. Valencia's 30 plus, you know, he's in his 30s. Been good, converted him back to a right back. I think Fergie started doing that and then the other managers have rolled with it and it's been a good transformation for him. I think when he broke his leg that time, he just sort of lost that sort of killer instinct on the wing and he's mm. sort of evolved his game to go further back. Send him Stoke if you don't know what <laughs> Yeah, he's quality, oh, isn't he? You know, but I do think they need to look at perhaps somebody <coughs> to... If he had a big injury or he's getting to a stage now, they need someone ready to step into that place and perhaps... Yeah, yeah. That's going to take that shit and be the next Gary Neville kind of thing. That's yeah. going to have a run. Uh, left back's not a... Pro- I think Luke Shaw now has proved that he's still... In the plans, I think he'll prove Mourinho wrong. I think he's just had to have a bit of him and Mourinho have had a bit of a icy relationship. I think. Mm. I think it's probably frustration with Mourinho. Yeah. I think yeah. he knows he's a good player. Exactly. And to yeah. be fair, Luke Shaw had a, had a terrible injury the other year, didn't he? Did, he? So yeah. he's coming back. Y- you know, I mean, definitely. I think I think Luke Shaw will be in, in the plans. I mean, like I say at the beginning of this season, a lot of people are thinking oh, he'll, be, he'll be gone by January at least yes. by at least January. But yeah, uh, now he's got a nice little run in the team, yeah, hasn't he? Kept team in, yeah. And uh, I think this is the big one. I think I still think that need a centre back, but this is the problem you've got with today's market. And I've been thinking through centre backs, who do you bring in? And you look at reports. I mean, it's a, it really is a lottery because you United. Uh, signed Eric Bailly and he come in and you thought he was brilliant and this guy's class. good he's class but and he's had a couple of injuries where he's been out of the team they've missed him he's made a big impact but that's that's where you get it right but then we signed Lindorf last summer and he's come in and he's had a shaky start he didn't play start in the Premier League for a good few games because he had that super was it the Super League against Madrid he played a bit of a bad uh, game yes, yeah. now he's come in he's done a job he looks look good in certain games but it's a lottery you can pay a lot of money like I see reports of Johnny Evans and Arsenal haven't signed and City wanted him Johnny Evans for me he's good he's a good player but he's not when he was at United he wasn't somebody you looked at and thought he's going to take you forward in the next he's going to be like the next Rio Ferdinand or Vidic he'll be a good defender like Smalling and James similar to them he'll come in and do a job but they want to pay you know he's become a 20 plus million player He's good at West Brom, don't get me wrong, he's doing a great job at West Brom, he's looked really good since he's been there, but who do you buy that centre-backs are, t- it's a tough decision to, to pick. Yeah, I'll, well, like Manchester City yesterday, they signed Laporte, didn't they, yeah. from Bilbao, and he, I mean, he is a good player, Yeah. but, I mean, the price is, as well, for, yeah. for I mean, was it 65 or 75 million they paid for Yeah. Him? I mean, and not that financially it's an issue for Manchester United, but it's getting the right players yeah. in. The right centre backs in, and exactly like you said about Johnny Evans. I mean, yeah. he, United for me, he was decent. Yeah, but he was. Well, that that was that for me was his level. Decent yeah. was enough. Yeah. But I don't think he was. I think he was wasn't quite good enough. He was a good squad player yes, for United. Exactly. That's so, all he was. To Smalling and Jones now. I think Smalling and Jones will do a job at a, a team. But in, in Manchester United, I don't see them as a leader. Leader. No. And. I think when they first signed, everyone tipped Jones this morning with the future United in England, and it's just Joe Jones has been hit by injuries, and I think he's sort of never really had a good run. But at the same time, Smalling there's, there's too many there's too many flaws in the game. I mean, mm. Chris Smalley for me, he will get caught. He's constantly tugging shirts and pulling. There's a lot. You could tell he come from a non non league football background. He's constantly pulling at people's shirts, and he's t- he's wrestling people in the box. And one day, he will cost him big in a big game. Yeah. Probably will. Yeah. Probably will. Did Smalling sorry, just sort of change the subject a little mm. bit? Did he? Was it Roy Hodgson that brought him through at Fulham? Yeah. Where did he? Where did he play prior to that? Where, where Mainstone or someone? Oh, like Mainstone. Yeah, was somebody it? non-league. Yeah. Right. But then, and on the day, I mean, he looked at Smalling when Van Aard, and he thought, you know, he, he looks good. Oh, sometimes you think he looks half decent. He looks quite consistent. And there's other times where he just sort of like you've got your hands over your face a bit, sort of like, what's he <laughs> going to do next? But I think. They definitely, it's a hard market. Who would you pick for centre backs? Because, like you say, you've got to pay stupid money for them, but at the same time, you can pay stupid money for them and they can flop. Yeah. And this is where United have been criticised. They've brought players in the last few years, but sometimes they've paid too much for players that haven't really been up to the level. Yeah, I mean, you know, when Alex Ferguson was there, I mean, every, that this would happen once in a blue moon. It yes. would happen. He would sign oh, yeah. somebody to spend big money. Can, Diego Forland, it, yeah. I, mean, I mean, he was one of them. He mm. brought him in and, like, it didn't work out mm. that happens yes. but the problem is when over a period of three seasons if you've got managers in 
and it's happening once or yes. twice every season exactly. and you're spending big yeah. money it's not good enough no, is it no it isn't and it's uh, gets to the point where Mourinho I mean Mourinho didn't like it just I think he was told weren't he something you'd have to sell to buy yeah and that's uh, that just shows listen if you, you can buy this but I mean Mkhitaryan hasn't really I mean it's disappointing because I like he's, he liked him but he's never really been that consistently good at United he hasn't had that good run he's had a, he's had a few spell blips but then he's gone like no, I rated him I, yeah, I, I, like, him. I like Mkhitaryan but I think Arsenal again there because like I think because he one of the pundits on Sky said they, Arsenal will miss Sanchez's goals but Mkhitaryan's assists will make up for that because that's the kind of player he is and he does score goals as well now they've signed Aubameyang as well yeah. I mean that's yeah. a, that for me that's a cracking yeah, sign it is, isn't it? Good to get player. a player like him in January as well oh yeah, yeah. I mean fair play to Arsenal for that yeah. I mean Mkhitaryan and Aubameyang yeah. if you would ask any Arsenal fan that they'd say oh, I'd yeah. take that now you know what I mean uh, uh, obviously they would have preferred to have kept Sanchez and I know yes. they would have and Sanchez, but Aubameyang and Ozil he had to go then to he had, of course yeah. he did of course he did that, I think, I think it's, I think Sanchez thought maybe at the beginning of last season that he thought my time's up here now yeah. That just as you mentioned, Ozil. Actually, that's a player that I wouldn't mind. I mean, it looks like he's going to sign a new deal at Arsenal now. Yeah, it was on Sky Sports yeah. yesterday. So that's what's new. But I wouldn't mind seeing him play at United because I think Ozil, when he was at Real Madrid, he's always one of them players. He's a good player, but I don't think he's the main man. Where yeah. at Arsenal, he goes missing a bit because he's seen as the main man. But when he's at Real Madrid, when you got the players around you, oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I think if he got if he if he'd have come United, then he'd have had like. You know, Lukaku, Sanchez now, and players like that around him. I think he would have flourished and Pogba either flourished and either either looked good because he's not a leader, leader that's going to take the game and sort of grab it. No. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And you're right. I mean, Ozil, Ozil's a good player. He's yeah. just. Um, he's a good. I think, like you say, there are games where, especially for Arsenal, he mm. doesn't show up. No. And um, <clears throat> that and the problem is, it sticks out like a sore yes, thumb when he doesn't yeah. play. And if it was to, if let's say United, you know, would have brought him in, he would have had the joy of the fact that you know you yeah. have got your Pogba's there, you've yeah. got your Lukaku's, you've got your your, your Sanchez's, and you know, <clears throat> decent enough players around him. I'm not saying he didn't have decent no. enough players around yeah, him at yeah. Arsenal, but I still, you know, a team like Manchester yeah. United or even Manchester City, somebody like that, he's got the players around yeah. him. Yeah. So you know he wouldn't have to to be that player yeah. that everyone looks at and, and relies on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. I think it was going back to like that first transfer we're going to do. David Moyes had when Ozil went to Arsenal. Yeah. It would have been a far better fit for both clubs, I think, if Mara and Fellaini had gone to Arsenal because they needed that bit of grit and fight, mm -hmm. and Ozil had gone to United because United needed that kind of play with a bit of flair in the midfield. I think I think I think Moyes was really struggling in that. Yes, market, he was. He? he was. Well, the fact he could have got Fellaini four million pound cheaper. A couple of weeks before, couldn't he? Um, but he let it go because he was convinced he was getting Tony Cruz. He was convinced he was getting Fabregas. And I think Edward. I see that's Moyes. Ed Woodward didn't help because it was his first year about David Gill at United. Obviously, Gill got all the deals done early, and he was. Yeah. But I think I, I'm glad. Just on the record about David Moyes, I'm glad to see him doing well now at West Ham because I think I'm not. I, I'm obviously not. But <laughs> sorry, no, I, do, no, I, think, I don't mean that. I, no, I, I know I do. I, do I think mean, he. I, uh, I think he. he Everton, a club like Everton, he really was comfortable, and that was his level. And then he come United, he was out of his depth from the beginning. Really, I think it was it was a, a hiding to nothing. And then he went abroad because that's he had to get out and do it abroad. Didn't really do it well there. Sunderland's been flogging a dead horse for years. Yeah, I'm going to say it's yeah. been it's been on the cards. Yeah. The problem is when when it happens over a period of five or six yeah. seasons, when you you're close to dropping every season. Yeah. Eventually, we've seen yes. it with Wigan. We've yeah. seen it with Aston Villa. It, it's going to yeah, happen. Exactly. I mean, Allardyce came in and saved them for a year. Canio came in and saved them. was there. Yeah. Poyet was there. Yeah, as well, they all saved it? them for a year. And it was always by the skin of the teeth, more or less, two or yeah. three games before the end of the season. But now he's at a club like West Ham. I think that's pretty similar for Moise's level. And oh, I think yeah. he's, yeah. Uh, you know, he's, obviously he's turned them around a bit. He's got Arnie playing a bit, which must, uh, oh. yeah. Yeah, a bit of a sore point yeah. there. He says, Arnie's a good player. Yeah. He's uh, he's just a bit of a prick." He is, but that's where that's perhaps <laughs> where Hughes has gone a bit because uh, he never really replaced him, did he? Well, he brought in Chupo Moting, and, yeah. and the thing is, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't really want to talk too much about Stoke no, today, no, but yeah. I mean, I watched I watched Stoke last night, and Chupo Moting's one of them where you know he, he he is good on the ball. He's good, you know, he runs with the ball, but the problem is for me, he does a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Now, Arnie did that in the early. A stage yes. of his career at Stoke, yeah. but then he evolved his game a bit. 
the difference is that Chupo Moting, I think he's 27 now. Yeah, yeah. You see, Arnie, when he first came to us, was probably, what, 24? 20, yeah. See, you know, 23, yeah. 24. So he's developed his game now. Yeah. Chupo Moting's probably got... He can still develop his game, but... but he's at peak into it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, you're right. He, yeah. he was never replaced for Stoke. But, um, but no, anyway, so you... Uh, okay, we've spoken about yeah. transfers. But you, you, you've got an idea in your head who you'd like next season but yeah. um, it's all ifs and buts and transfer yeah, market exactly. a, a bit of a lottery at times it is, it? yeah it's, it really is taking a gamble especially like say the centre off like you've, I'm looking through centre backs now and I'm thinking if you want a top quality one you're going to have to pay through your nose for one but then it's like who do you if, if I, we've got one Kevin Vimmer Kevin Vimmer yeah right yeah <laughs> I wouldn't, you can have I, him I wouldn't sell him in a selection box at Christmas yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no but it's like you do look at the centre. It's like the individual Van Dijk, seventy-five million. I like Van Dijk. He was good at Liverpool, but seventy-five million, really? He isn't worth seventy-five no. million. Not not by any stretch no. of the imagination. I mean, he's a good. He is a good defender, and yeah. I think. And I'm not going to keep talking about Liverpool. Like no, I no, seem to mention yeah. them every week. But, <laughs> but with Liverpool, like I've said this from the beginning, if they sort out that back yes. four, and Virgil Van Dijk is a good start. I think if, if you can get a decent partner with Van Dijk. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like Joe Gomez looks good play. Yeah, he does, he does good play. It. But I think um, <clears throat> sort of at back four in Liverpool next season for me have got a chance. Yeah, they, they are they, they, the the type of football they play. It's aggressive. It's pressing. You know, they they, they are a good side. Mm. But that's where they lack. And I think luckily for you know for for teams like yourself, and the reason that you are second in the league is that you don't concede many goals. But the Liverpool getting back to Liverpool, they're going to have to make sure the top four has got to be a priority for them, isn't it? Because yeah. if they look at they don't get that top four. I mean, Coutinho's gone now to Barca. I know there's things that Anza sniffing around Salah, isn't he? Keeps praising him up. And wow, I mean, Real Madrid are getting to that stage now where they're starting to the Benzema's, the Bale, the Ronaldo's are sort of getting to that age now where they're sort of pushing and them aside, the and they've got to replace them. And these got players, yeah, and, and exactly like you say, Salah would mm. be a perfect fit yeah, for someone like would, Real. Yeah. Salah's quality and I, I mean I'll be honest with you I knew he was doing when he was at Roma the other year I mean I know he was doing quite well there but I didn't realise he'd sort of developed his game that I mean, much and turned into the, the player I always rated him when he was at Basel and then when Chelsea signed him I said they got a decent player there but then obviously they sort of like sent him away and then eventually sold him and I always thought well I thought he'd do well there yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so where do you think you're going to finish this season well, I think last question. Last, right. I think I think we will. We'll definitely finish top four. I yeah, think we've got the quality. We've got the squad that. to do that. And um, I do think at the moment we're in second. I mean, obviously last night we were three Liverpool three points behind us now. Yeah. Um, I think we'll, I think we will finish second. I do think we'll finish second. <coughs> yeah. If not third, I can definitely see we'll definitely be in the top four. I can definitely see that. What would you? What would you? Okay, now as we know, the Premier League is pretty much done and dusted and yes. away at the top. Yeah. So, to sort of get a successful ending to this season, yeah. what would you be looking for? Uh, right. Okay. Priorities. Uh, I think we've, it's disappointing going out of the League Cup to Bristol. It would have been nice to get to the final again of that because obviously we won it last year. Mm-hmm. So, for me now, the FA Cups. Yeah. I think we must. We must definitely get, at least. It's nice to win the FA Cup. Um, to have some silver to keep the momentum going because he come in won the League Cup and the Europa League last season Champions League now you see Champions League we've got a good draw against Seville they're going to be a tough side don't mm-hmm. get me wrong but we should progress I think we've got enough quality to progress to that and a good push in the Champions League it would definitely I mean if not to say why not Chelsea won it that year with the squad they had there's nothing to say that we can't win it with the squad we've got I mean I know it's ambitious to go and say we're going to win it because there's some good sides in Europe but definitely have a go I'd say at least at least at the quarterfinals, if not semi-finals, just try and. You've just got to keep yeah, going, haven't you? Exactly. I mean, it's yeah. the same with the FA Cup, really. Just yeah. keep going, try and win. I mean, if you, I'd imagine if you finish second this season, come away with some sort of a trophy. Yeah. I think it would still be seen regarded as a successful season oh, because yes, the fact you finished in the top yes. four, you yeah. know, that's a big thing. Yeah. I mean, last season you relied on on the Europa League. Yeah. This season you haven't got to do that because obviously you're one of the yeah. top two, top three best teams exactly, in, in, yeah. in the league. So yeah, I mean, I, from from you know from my point of view, I, I would have, I would if I was a United fan, I would see that as as, as a it's successful, successful season, season yeah. definitely. Right, and Dave, yeah. thank you very very much. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Thanks for doing this video with me. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe in the description box below. 
And until next time, have a good one.